It's no secret now that the new Apple Macs carrying the M1 chip are amazing performers just cruising around YouTube, including on my channel. You can find plenty of evidence that these lower spec computers are holding their own against Macs that are double and triple the price. But now that people have them in their hands and are starting to use them in earnest for their work, it's time to ask the age old question. Can you trust the M1 Max. I was excited after Apple's announcement event and went on the Apple website immediately and ordered two Macs, a MacBook Pro 13 and a Mac Mini. The MacBook Pro is the base spec with 512 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM, and the Mac Mini has a one terabyte hard drive as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM. The idea being just to see how the base model performs for the sake of curiosity and to cover on the channel and get the mini to replace my current 2019 MacBook Pro 15 inch, which has served me well, but I wish I had gotten more storage and more RAM when I bought it. I had three hopes for these computers. One, the Mac mini could, as I said, replace my current Mac and offer me speed and processing power. Two, I could get more for my money by going this route, spending half of what I spent on the current computer that I have in computers from the past. And three, I would be able to get my work done, even though in my mind, I knew that uh, new operating system and hardware inside makes for some bumpy road. <laughs> that's where the issues start to come in, that number three. And that's a big reason I'm making this video because I know there are a lot of folks out there who might be on the verge of pulling the trigger on one of these, sort of sitting on the fence, wondering if these machines are what they should be. Let me say again, in case anybody's out there with warming up their fingers for an invective filled tome down in the comments below, the new Macs are incredible machines. It was so hard to believe what Apple was claiming during that launch event that having a hot take on why it couldn't be possible and why Apple was full of crap almost became a meme. Yes, the new M1 Max are for real. The benchmarks show it, the live tests show it, the comparisons show it. My $2,800 MacBook Pro gets smoked by that M1 MacBook Pro that I have that's just the base model with eight gigabytes of RAM. But here's where all that kumbaya starts to end and we have to take a dark turn down the bumpy road that leads to Realityville. So I'm a songwriter, producer, musician, uh, several other things, as well as a universally beloved YouTube personality, but YouTube pays my bills. And I wanted to cover these new machines because I knew they would be disruptors to the market, unlike anything we've seen from Apple in a long, long time. As such, I ordered these new Macs, knowing full well in the back of my mind that the transition to new hardware architecture and new software for the first time in 20 years wasn't going to go <laughs> as planned, at least in the beginning. Yes, that's right, OS X came out 20 years ago. I feel old. Somewhere in the deep depths of my mind, I knew, but I hoped, I had hope. I just didn't have any idea, ultimately, how much switching to these new machines would impact my ability to do the work that I do. Using Apple-built software is generally fine. Final Cut and Logic have been ported over to the M1 chip, and for the most part, they work great. But that's not the whole story. I mean, the MacBook Pro 13 has exhibited all kinds of weird behavior since I got it last week. Sometimes the keyboard would lag and it's like a ghost typing, like spaces and jumbled up letters and stuff like that. And it would go on for like 20 seconds and then stop. And I had to erase all that crap and start typing again. And using Final Cut, there were times when applying a simple audio normalization with Final Cut's own audio tools, the audio waveforms would disappear and then it would take 30 seconds for them to redraw themselves very slowly. It's definitely possible there's something wrong with that machine and I am gonna send it back because the Mac mini hasn't exhibited any of those kinds of things. But what really knocked me off the M1 Mac hype train was when I tried to reinstall my audio hardware and software first. I use a universal audio Thunderbolt interface that requires front end driver software to talk to the DSP inside the unit and it has to be installed for it to work. I've also been using their new recording software, Luna, which comes as a part of that software package. I went to the UAD website, I clicked download and uh, it 
instead of just seeing something pop up and drop drop down to my downloads folder and download away, I just, I saw, nope, we don't swing that way just yet. Check back later. Like no timeline, no nothing. So that's eighteen hundred dollars worth of gear I can't use for an indefinite amount of time. And if I want to work on stuff that I've worked on before in Luna, I have to go back and somehow port that stuff out to Logic. Then I went to install Native Instruments Complete Package. Another big no. I have about $1,000 invested in Native Instruments, so that's another huge chunk out of my capabilities there as well. And when I tried to live stream last week for the podcast, um, it, yeah, Stuff wasn't supported, software hadn't been ported over. It was a disaster. So I had to set up my old MacBook Pro in this new setting so I could do the podcast last night and whatever live streaming, actually I record this way too. So I had to set this whole other studio set up to use it. Tell me what you think about the, uh, the new look down in the comments. Along the way, there have been a few other hiccups here and there, but those, the audio stuff, the software, et cetera, et cetera, are the deal breakers for me for now. Everyone who works with a computer doing something like audio, video, et cetera, et cetera, knows the cardinal rule. Never upgrade. <laughs> Upgrading like this is like having a flood wash through half of your physical studio and tearing everything away. Everything stops, no work gets done, and you spend days trying to work around all, this, all the chaos. If I didn't get these computers to try out for the channel, there's no way I would have gotten them at all. Not for at least six months to a year. Apple always puts us in this weird position, best expressed by I Justine on a Twitter thread that I had where she said this. We know we shouldn't do it, but it looks so good and seems so cool that it's really hard to resist. Big Sur definitely plays a role in some of these issues, but I'm using Big Sur on this Intel Mac and most everything works fine. So can you trust the M1 Max? No. If you're somebody who does, you know, communication and consumption type stuff with your computer and you don't need it to do any heavy lifting with audio, video, like any kind of niche work, then you'll be fine. These machines are actually great for that and they're ready to go. But if you use your computer as a musician, YouTuber, videographer, software developer, all kinds of other stuff, remember the rule. Never upgrade until you have to. The M1 Max are crazy fast and powerful and they're going to change the computing landscape in the years to come, but they aren't ready for prime time. Not now, not yet, but hopefully soon. Thanks for being here, folks. I really do appreciate it. If this was your first time here and you wanna come back and see me again, join the Painfully Honest Hype Train then you can like and subscribe down below. If you haven't subscribed before, but you think you're subscribed, you know, I checked out my analytics. 30% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. So that means 70% of the people who watch my videos are not. And I, that number seems low. So why don't you just go ahead and hit that red button and you know, we can get that number up. Come on. It's like a telethon. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, Really appreciate you guys being here. You're the light of my life. Uh, once again, my name's Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I am out.